<laughs> to my right, please. So uh, let's talk a little bit about um, franchising, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, We've got a great panel here. I'll, I'll be brief with the introductions. So uh, on my left is uh, Brian Johnston, old friend and experienced uh, franchise director at Vagamama, been taking the brand uh, uh, forward during the last five years. Um, Gerd Kopera from uh, Hakasan Group, also working in the space, and another old friend, so I'm very fortunate. <laughs> uh, uh, in addition, we have from Amrest, a soon-to-be friend, uh, Christopher Jones, uh, who's um, their president, new president, newly appointed uh, for franchising and concession, and uh, Nick Taplin, chairman and CEO of Black and White Hospitality. So we have a great panel here, and uh, a big topic. Um, we only got 30 minutes, so we thought we would focus on key questions. <laughs> yes, blueberries. can you franchise blueberries? <laughs> Um, so let's start with something very fundamental. What, what is a franchise? Some people say we license, some people say we franchise, some people say we don't franchise, but we have partners in other countries that we work with. To me, that's all a version of franchise. There are franchise light models, which are probably called licensing. There are traditional franchise models. There are manchise models, where the franchisor takes a management responsibility, and then maybe one up from that is a joint venture, where the franchisor also puts some money into the venture. But I'll just kind of throw it out there for debate. Get, I know you're more on the manchise side of thing with your business, so how would you describe that? Correct. We do generally, we either own our businesses, own and operate our businesses, or we do management contracts, meaning we seek a reliable partner, and depending on the infrastructure of the partner, we offer full service. We can do everything from site selection to project management, to negotiating with our consultants, with interior designers, audio, lighting, food service consultants, all the way through to purchasing FFNE, OSNE, and hiring, training, sourcing the staff, hiring, training the staff, and operating the venue. So this would be the management contract. We rarely do franchising. I would need to defer to the experts on the other side of the panel. So I know, Brian. Uh, you would describe your model more as a franchise as a model, although I know you offer quite a lot of the support that Gerd just mentioned as well. That's so what's the difference? Well, we, we typically op operate on a franchise basis where we grant an exclusivity, limited exclusivity to either a country or a territory uh, tagged on to a development agreement, uh, which gives them some exclusive rights to open, develop, and operate the brand. As a franchise, all what do we do? We give them access, we give our franchisees access to our system, our infrastructure, um, and we engage with them effectively on a daily basis, really giving them marketing input, product information, uh, business insights, business leadership. So it's maybe slightly less hands-on at the management yep. model yep. where that someone like Hakazan would actually be in there in the restaurant with the partner on the operational side. A franchisor would not typically do that, maybe apart from a launch you know, activity right. where right. they might support yeah. the franchisee. So, uh, Nick, would you agree with that, or do you have a different definition of franchising? No, I I think the, uh, uh, from a franchising model, I think, I think the one thing you're bringing is a, is, is a brand. And, and you know, we're, in, we're in great company today with some, you know, with some fantastic global brands. From black and white hospitality's perspective, you know, we're the master franchise, franchisor for Marco Pierre White. So we're bringing uh, a brand into the business. We're bringing a hook to bring people into a, in, into a restaurant. We're, as Marco always tells me, we're, we're, we're putting interest where there is no interest. And I think that's really where, where brands come from. And as a, as yeah. a franchisor, that, that's what we're trying to achieve. And master franchising, of course, is, is yet another way of skinning the cat. So in a master yeah. franchise, somebody would get appointed for a substantial territory, and they yeah. would have authority 
to find sub-franchisees, so they wouldn't themselves open all 20 mm -hmm. restaurants. They would find local, maybe, I know you do some hotels, for example, you would find someone to partner with, and that's a very fast way of, of scaling. I no, no, I think, um, you've got to, I think you've got to split it up. We, we, we took the UK to 48 restaurants, yeah. then taking the, the global rights um, with our partners, Ramal and, and UAE, we, we've, the, the world's now a bigger place, so you're not going to do it on your own. I think you need to have some very good franchisees below you, and I think we'll come on to that, but it's about finding yeah. the right partner. Yeah, a master franchisee for the whole world. That's an ambitious yep. <laughs> undertaking. Now, Amrest is a master franchisee for a good chunk of the world, for, I know, Starbucks and KFC, but I know you have a total of 11 concepts, and now you're also looking to turn the tables and uh, be a franchisor as well. So tell us about that, Chris. Well, that's, that's a recent story, absolutely. I'm, I'm very pleased I joined the Amrest family a few weeks ago, actually. Um, and yes, it doesn't really matter the deal you want to do. I don't call them franchisees. I call them partners, associates, friends, um, whatever you want to do, because it's actually just more than a franchise relation. Um, <coughs> and that's important for the discussions we're going to have after on how, on how to deal and how we could deal with them. Um, when it comes to Amrest, absolutely. We, um, we are a franchisee group, let's put it this way. We, we, we have licenses, and from that, the group shifted into uh, owning, buying, uh, and making deals with uh, brands, and now they, they decided to have a real franchisor attitude to that. Um, and obviously, when it comes to that, it's how, how you see the business, how you would start the franchisor uh, uh, and the franchise division. Then you need to ask yourself, the basic questions before you start building the franchise or mm -hmm. uh, business. And that's, that's those foundations. How, how do we go there? So that's interesting. You so you're a bit of both. You're a franchise or exactly. and yeah, a franchisee. Franchise. So what we see, I think, is that franchising is very versatile. It's actually it's a great business model. And it can be used from you know, a Domino's pizza to quite a high-end hakazan. They wouldn't call it franchising, mm -hmm. we know, but there's a, there's a spectrum there. So uh, I personally, mm -hmm. that's what I do. I, I'm a fan, but I know there's that question out there when you talk to business owners. Is franchising a good idea or is a bad idea? So I'm just sort of going to throw it out there. Good idea, <laughs> bad idea, yeah. Yeah, that very much depends. Um, uh, it depends on your partner, seriously. It always Getting depends on the franchisee. Come over. Uh, franchise is definitely the way to get your brand out. It's definitely the way to get your brand to a larger audience without having to cough up the significant capital investment for expansion, nor having to have the human capital on hand for this expansion, which becomes more and more of a challenge in our industry globally. <coughs> um, on the other hand, of course, the brand other than you people is all you have, unless you invest in real estate. So you're giving all you have to somebody. So choosing the right franchise partner is almost like saying, would this be the right mother for my children? Because it's a vital decision and it can go both ways. So franchising in general is definitely a great idea. Uh, but like every business, there's a significant element of risk and you're well advised to do your research in advance and to be particular in choosing your franchise partner. So uh, it's a good idea with the right partner. <coughs> Correct. Yeah. What do you say, Brian? Is that, hmm. Would you subscribe I think it, it, to it, that? It's, it's, it generally is a good idea. It's invariably complex and there are many touch points and variabilities that have to be taken into account. I, I'm, I'm coming to the opinion that for some brands or some concepts, it's a lot easier to franchise and to be a franchisor than for others. And mm -hmm. if, the brand, if the concept is highly systemized, nearly automated, that's a positive. If it's scalable and therefore it's got space to grow, it's a concept that can grow in a territory, that's a good point. And if it's particularly functional for the guest point of view, um, that makes it also very easy to, to, to replicate and roll out. In my own view, the complexity comes when 
the brand, the concept or the brand, has an element of I can say atmosphere, entertainment, expectations, and, and that human characteristic that is required. Um, and to bottle that and replicate that gets much more complex. Yeah, um, I, I think that's a good point. Brian is describing a hakasan. <laughs> <coughs> So how do you do that with the Marco Pierre White concept? I mean, a lot rides on Marco's reputation, and so you're franchising it, can't the franchisees mess it up big time, and then there's damage to oh, the... Oh, they can. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think, I, I think for, from my perspective, it's, it's, it's linking the right franchisor and franchisee together. I think the franchisee yeah. has got to choose the right partner, and the franchisor has got to choose the right partner. Mm. Um, that's, you've got to have, you've got to, you've got to be aligned. You know, you're, you're looking to take a franchise on because you want help. You're looking to take a franchise because you want assistance. You, you want something, you want that hook, you want that brand to bring something in. I think, I think you've got to, you've got to take that back and get the brand right from the beginning. I mean, just, just going for what Brian's saying, I mean, one of my, um, one of my boy's birthday, he was 15, um, and in February, uh, 2nd of February, first week of January, I said, where do you want to go for dinner? I said, come on, I'll get something booked. He said, I want to go to Wagamama's. <clears throat> Fantastic. We go to Wagamama's, we sit down for dinner. All my kids, I've got hundreds of kids. All my kids are on the phones, their friends are on their phones. The waiter comes over to take the order. And I look at the menu desperately. I'm like, guys, come on, you've got, to, you've got to place the order. I want the katsu curry, I want the chili chicken ramen, I want the peas, I want this. I'm like, you haven't looked at the menu. He said, well, don't you know what you're having, Dad? I went, well, I haven't looked, but I think I know what I'm having. Then I think back to January. He chose the first week of January where he was going for dinner based on the katsu curry, because that's what he wanted for dinner. And so it, when, you when you say, is it the franchisee or the franchisor, it's also about the right brand. Mm -hmm. They chose the brand because of what they're actually going to have for their main course. So that was in the right environment, in the right place. We then traveled to that restaurant because it was the right brand, it was the right mm -hmm. fit for my son, for the family. But I think in the same, in the same sentence, you've also got to look at the right franchisee and the right franchisor. Because if that yeah. franchise all gets it wrong, you're spoiling the experience for another region, another territory. Mm -hmm. If yeah. that cat's curry is different, if that cat's curry is not different at the same time. So it's the same in any of our brands that we're doing. It's about consistency, mm -hmm. it's about, but it's about choosing the right brand at the beginning. Yeah, and, and I think that's a good example mm -hmm. of how it can be good or bad, depending on how you go. Because if I eat my favorite curry at a franchisee location mm. and it doesn't taste right, I might never come back. That's right. that's so that's it, Wagamama's gone off, I'm not mm. going there again. But mm. equally, if the franchisor stays on top of his game and keeps reinventing the brand, creating great mm. new dishes, you know, yeah. your kids probably yeah. still be there in yeah. 10 years <laughs> time. And their kids too. Yeah. And, and, and we know also, that, uh, I, I agree, and also I would say that in a longer term relationship that you want to build with the franchise partners, there's going to be time, like in a couple, there's going to be hard times, right? Mm -hmm. So when we celebrate, all good. We celebrate. Party, perfect. But when hard times come, crisis, local crisis, economy, whatever, then if both of us, we share values and we, ha we have pleasure to be together, then we will fight to try to find a solution, not the one who's going to get the other around the corner which is a very different attitude on this one-to-one -one franchisee, franchisor. All life, all the time, it will be like that. When people ask me, do you have a solution to run and manage the franchisees? Well, it's a one-to-one -one thing. So 100 franchisees, 100 different relations, even if you have a structure, even if you have <laughs> process. At the end of the end, you need to have this relationship built because there will be moments where you have to find solutions um, and sometimes also it's very healthy that franchisees make the franchisor move. We are the mirror, the franchisees are the mirror to also what doesn't work or, or could be a danger in your company, mm -hmm. and they ring the bell. So that's also a, a, an alarm bell that comes from the internals. And a lot of companies, I don't know what percentage, but a lot of companies that don't have franchisees are actually restaurants that died mm -hmm. because they didn't work on the innovation and everything. They didn't see the danger come. Mm -hmm. They didn't see the bigger picture. Exactly. Have yeah, no that's a good point. So uh, one of the things we were discussing at the yeah. workshop yesterday yeah. was around the communication that's necessary between franchisor and franchisee for it to be a successful two-way relationship. Because franchisees can have great new ideas, like yeah, famously the Egg Absolutely. McMuffin mm -hmm. was invented yeah. by a franchisee and, and communicated back and shared around the system. 
And equally, when things are not going so well for franchisees, it's important to know early mm -hmm. on and to step in there and fix yep. it and yep. help them. So I, th I think yep. you do that as we, like a mama, we, don't you, Brian? We, we have a, with, with our franchisees, we do half yearly structured business review meetings. We have a consistent standard template, um, which, which effectively harvests as much information out of the business, which we can help them analyze, and we can help them understand. We can understand how their business is performing, and we can help them understand how their business is performing. Unfortunately, not every franchisee is that good with their administration, with their analysis, and with their understanding. And you know, benchmarking, cross-referencing, and the fact that we have this format, and we, we can share targets and measurements and uh, metrics that we have within our own business, in our own restaurants, and we share these with our franchisees and say, well, look, you know, we are selling 110% beverage to each cover. Um, you're only selling 80%. 20% of your guests are not having a beverage. What's happening there? And that sort of guidance, coaching, insight gathering, and insight sharing is a good way, I think, of giving that leadership to the franchisees. I think that makes a good franchisor as well to, to be there for them and to help them with that analysis and not to, you know, so it's easy to develop a blame culture. Yep, yep. Why has a franchise restaurant failed? Oh, it's all the franchisors' fault. They haven't helped me. Yeah, no, no, all the franchisees fall, they've not followed the system. And, you know, mm. you gotta, probably what I've seen is uh, people need to invest in being a franchisor. You can't just hold yourself out as being a franchisor, sell a few franchises and leave people to no. it. There's a team that needs to be behind it. Well, That's uh, quite important. The franchisor has to understand what they're getting into. And what does it mean to be a franchisor? It isn't just, as has been said on many occasions up here the past day, you know, selling a franchise. No. Happy days. Oh, look. Some, we've flattered. Somebody wants us. Somebody likes us. That's a surprise. OK. Yeah. Give them a franchise. What does it mean f to the brand owner when they actually enter into that franchise agreement? What are they, what are they having to do? What are they risking? You know, they risk their the integrity mm. of their brand, the, the ultimate survival of their brand, which is comes, put at risk. Which comes down to the infrastructure. Yep. It comes yep. down to that backup support yeah. of what you're giving to the franchisee afterwards. It isn't just a, a book of brand standards, a standard operating procedure. Here's the logos. You, you oh, get oh, on with it. It's, it's what you're going to do afterwards. Because when we open any restaurant, um, it's you know, Marco comes, we do the launch mm -hmm. night. It's fantastic. You, you, we all celebrate <laughs> the success of a new opening. Now the hard work starts because now you've got to get consistency. Now you've got to get more customers in. The hype's died down. Now you've got to keep those customers coming back and they, you'd, because they used to have another restaurant they went to. Now you're asking them to come to your restaurant instead. So it, it, comes, down, it comes down to infrastructure. You have to have the right system in place. I, I don't think you can underestimate the power of um, benchmarking, the power of league tables. Uh, it, it just, for, for an owner, for a manager, for a franchisee, League tables, just, just do it. Marcus is all the time, what are we doing about side orders? What are we doing about cocktails? How's this going? What's the percentage of steaks versus in a steakhouse versus, versus the, the, the other dishes? You've got a benchmark because people want to be, people want to be tasked. People want to be, they want to win. We're all winners. Anyone that's taken a franchise, anyone that's taken a franchise from you has won. They're successful. They have money. They have a business, a hotel, a casino, a football club. They are successful. That's why they come to you to be more successful. <coughs> You put them in a league table and put them mid, put them mid table, put them in their relegation zone. They're not happy. Correct. They then go to their managers. We're all aligned. Yep. The more sales that come in, the more commissions that come in. So we're trying to help them, but sometimes that message gets lost. So benchmarking, yeah. benchmarking yep. in league tables, fantastic. And so there is a lot of there is a lot of internal work to be done before we actually go out and franchise. And 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 I, I usually call those four pillars: have a sexy brand because you need one, whether it's profitable or whether it's unique, whether it's number one in the market, sexy brand. Um, have a clear strategy. That's also what you want to do with your business model. Where do you want to go? With whom do you want to go? How do you want to go there? What's the timing? And then get your legals ready, because that's another topic also, mm -hmm. the legals. How do you square it off? Mm -hmm. So what do you want to give away? What do you want to keep? How much do you want to get out of that? And, and et cetera. Then, then obviously, it's, it's, it's passionate uh, uh, partners, franchisees, and then also you need 
specific teams. As we mentioned, when you want to go and you want to open in Mexico, if, if you're from Vienna, Austria, how, how do you have somebody there adapting? How would you choose your partner there? Um, and you, they know the market, you don't know the market. How do you adapt your... So there's a lot of questioning that needs to be done before you actually plan your... your before you go and start scouting. Yeah? And that's, that's the work that, and that's the thinking that internally we need to do uh, kind of before going really yeah, of on both ends. It's a very hard part of it because when you're, when you're looking for a new, a new franchisee and they are passionate, they seem right, but you've just met them. It's a new yeah, relationship. Yeah, it's, like, it's like meeting, a, having a new girlfriend. You don't know them straight away. You don't, they don't move in on day two or on third date. You, you've got to get to know this person. Unfortunately, they're pushing because they want the franchise because they need the franchise and they're really keen. They've always wanted one and now they can afford it. But are they the right person? You've got to get inside them very quickly and understand their values are the same as yours and that they will uphold the brand. Yeah, I think that's one of the things people always ask, how do I pick the right partner? Sometimes mm -hmm. people come to me and say, Babette, yeah. can you help me find franchisees? But it's such a tricky thing to find a good franchisee. I mean, what, what you do get at, at, at Hakazan, I know you don't call them franchisees, but your partners that you, you must have criteria what you're looking for. We actually have one partner. One partner runs a large territory. Uh, one partner is a, franchisor, a franchisee for us in India, and he runs, they run four brands for us successfully. What we look for in a partner is a solid, reliable partner with a local infrastructure, as you just mentioned, somebody who can bring more to the party than finance on the, on the franchisee side, somebody who is in it for longer than a couple of years, we are not looking necessarily for somebody who is seeking to sub-franchise or, or, or continue the growth through other franchises, <laughs> through sub-franchisees. We're looking for somebody who appreciates our brands, who takes on our brands as their own, and runs it as their own business. Seeks from us research and development, seeks from us continuous support, and I think what's important to mention is that both partners in that relationship, franchisor and franchisee, have to be ready to give a little more than initially planned. Because support, giving a bit more, going the extra mile, really helps to, to make the relation a successful one. And it is a pretty significant investment to build a restaurant of one of our brands. Um, and we need to safeguard the investment of our franchisee, of our partner, uh, think, <coughs> through the success. Right. So just to add to that, I think when, when, you, when we're choosing a franchisee, when we're, when, we're, when we're starting that relationship, you don't want someone also that's just going to say, what do I do next, what do I do next? Yeah. You want a franchisee that's a little bit innovative. We all like to be pushed. We like to be challenged. You, we get the sales mix. You guys all get the sales mix. We know what sells. We're making those decisions. Mm -hmm. We want someone to say to us, have you thought about this? We've got development teams. Mm -hmm. We've all got big head office structures. Mm -hmm. But when the franchisee comes to you and said, I've seen this. The Is this a really knowledge. good idea? That's fantastic. That's what you want from a franchisee because it's a journey. Yes. We're a team. And what you say, we're family, we're friends, we're partners. However you want to call it. It's about working together. And if the franchisee can help you, he knows more about the business than, than we do because he's operating one. He's in it day to day. He might be in there seven days a week. So do you require them to have existing restaurant operating experience, or will you take someone who's never operated a restaurant no, before? My, I mentioned yesterday, my, my criteria, my first and foremost and overriding criteria in selecting a franchisee is one, is someone, an organization, an individual, that has got experience of being a franchisee already with a global or international brand. Ideally, preferably an F&B, not That's not necessarily the be-all and end-all. It's very helpful. But they know that the brand comes first. They know how to be a franchisee, what, to, what they should be expecting to have to do. Um, I don't, we're going to train them and teach them and coach them in our brand and in our brand DNA. I don't really want to have to start to educate them in how to be a franchisee as well. But I don't think sometimes the, the franchise agreement the brand standards or the standard operating procedures actually tell you how to be a franchisee. That's different. That's yep. separate. That's a conversation. Yep. Mm -hmm. And to start to train someone that hasn't been a franchisee before, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. We're very fortunate. Most, the majority of our restaurants are in hotels. hotels. Yeah. 
it's mm -hmm. Hilton, it's ISG, mm -hmm. it's Wyndham, it's Marriott. Mm -hmm. we're, we're already in poverty. They're already a franchisee. Yep. So it's a lot easier. easier. They understand they, 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 how it works. Yeah. The, the brand comes first, and the brand is Correct. Ab above everything. The, the furthest you go from your hometown with, when it comes to QSR brands or, or, or fine casual or, or fast casual brands, the further you go, the more you need to have somebody solid for, who understands the industry uh, as a plus to understand his own market, as a plus to has the financial to grow, etc. If you're local or if you, if you franchise on the first belt, like, like you're from France and you franchise in Belgium, Swiss, you can, you can have somebody who has no experience mm -hmm. uh, because you can really give your support teams to, to him and, 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 and make it a win. But the, the further you go, the more thinking you need to do before and, and the more it drives the profile you're looking for. And the more you rely on the local knowledge of your partner. Absolutely. We have a prime example. We opened Omnia Day Club in Bali. And uh, it's a spectacular setting. It's beautiful, stunning. We were very skeptical as a company that this size of a day club will work in a remote location where the access is a road that's fairly bigger than that stage is wide, uh, long, wide. Uh, so it's, and, and we have thousands of people coming there every day, driving these treacherous roads to, to go. Our, French, our partner said they will come. They will come for Omnia. They will come for Sakinohana. And we were not sure, and we were cautious with our projections. <laughs> Never mind, we opened. We opened successfully a year ago, and yes, boy, do they come. Uh, so the franchise partner, or our partner in that case, was correct. So I can see here we're down to the last few minutes, so that I'm going to throw the last sort of thing out there. Um, what's people's number one tip for people in the audience who are thinking of franchising? What's the one thing you would give them to bear in mind? I mean, just maybe just go around get first. Please pick your partner right, both sides. As franchisor, pick your franchisee, and as franchisee, pick your franchisor. Make sure, as franchisee, you identify with the brand, you truly identify. It's not just a flag on your hotel or in your hotel. It's not just the brand that you would like to have on your business card. You need to subscribe to it. Preferably, you should be a vivid fan of the brand, then it's much easier. And for the franchisor, think twice. Don't move in the second day with the new girlfriend. Ryan? I think from, from a franchisor's point of view, or potential or budding franchisor, really think hard about it. Take as much advice from other franchisors as you possibly can. Yes. Learn from their mistakes. Avoid the pitfalls. Um, and from a franchisee's point of view, um, again, talk to as many other franchisees, mm. put good systems, positive, progressive, dynamic systems, learn from them, understand from those existing franchisees what a good franchisor looks like and what a good franchisor provides. You can take references as well yep. in, in that situation. Mm -hmm. Nick? Um, I think from a, from a franchisor's perspective, I think choose your partner wisely. I think you've got to look at the long term. Is it, is it one restaurant that you want to do? Is it one franchise? Mm -hmm. Is it 10 franchises? This is a journey, you're starting with one restaurant. Where do you want to take it? Where do you want the end goal to be? I think from a, from a franchisee's perspective, I think you should think carefully about your brand. And I think you should do your research. I think it's a really good point. Talk to other franchisees in the brand that you're considering. Ask them the good and the bad. <coughs> Don't just ask them the good, because we can, we, can we can all do that and go into it with mm -hmm. um, rose-tinted glasses. But I think from, and I have this discussion a number of times with new franchisees. We've got, we've got eight different restaurant brands with Marco. We've got from a, from a five-star Wheelers to a, to a pizzeria, um, a Blini and Espresso Bar. There's a, there's a big void in the middle of there, and there's a big difference. And sometimes the potential franchisee, that's what they want. They've always wanted it. I think a steakhouse is right. I think an Italian's right. I think, hang on, we've done a lot more of these than you have. So let's give you some data, let's give you some facts, let's show you some scenarios where it worked really well, let's show you some scenarios where we put the right, the right or wrong brand in, and, and give them the advice. And I think from a, a franchisee can be very, very excited, because it's a, it's a dream for them, it's something they've always wanted to do. But if you put the wrong brand in, you've got that for the next 10 years. 
yeah. you're going to have that challenge, and it's much more work. So have a discussion at the beginning and get it right. So from a franchisee perspective, definitely do your homework and pick the right brand that's suitable for you. Okay. Don't be romantic. <laughs> so be businessman. Maybe mm -hmm. a, another new point, if yeah. I can ask. I would, or I no, would, pick your partner, do your due diligence. No, what if, else? If I had to conclude on that, I would say make sure your brand is always a sexy, always number one, because that's the most important thing why they would come to you, the franchise partners to have a clear strategy. We've talked about it, really work on this. Um, and, the thing is, and the last thing is, have a partnership attitude. Mm -hmm. Treat them as associates, like you would like to be treated in a deal. That's for me what's important. Yeah. Brilliant. So um, maybe um, from my perspective as a lawyer, I would say also just be aware there are some global franchise laws out there. So franchisees enjoy some protection by legislation because they saw yep. that there are ruthless people who will sell someone a franchise and they take their life savings to purchase it and they lose everything right. and they're you know, settled with a lease and a big liability. And so it's also just important to stay on top of compliance. Compliance is there to stay, so yeah, we might yeah. as well embrace it. So when a client comes and says, how can I structure it? So it's not a franchise, so I don't have to do this. I tend to say, no, it's actually just do it. You know, it's actually not that difficult. Just give them the information the law requires you to give, and then you've, you know you're clean, and if something goes wrong, you're not in trouble. Yeah. So I can see. We're out of time. I know we're already kind of running late for a few things, so I would wrap it up on that. Thank you so much for the panel, for sharing you. your Thank thoughts. You. I'm going to stay here for two minutes for an award. Are you staying? I'm going to stay. You guys are okay. going because okay. Okay. I'm going to give an award to some people from the industry. Um, so... Um, what we've been doing for the last few years together with uh, Griff is to just recognize uh, restaurateurs in the industry that have worked well in franchising. So uh, we're calling it the Denton's Franchisor of the Year Award. Actually, we had such a tough time picking the winner that we're going to give three awards. So uh, uh, we have our our panel of uh, judges who've you know, helped me select, and we would like to recognize, um, would like to recognize the Restaurant Franchisor of the Year um, from the nominations uh, we've received, and, and that award goes to, to Amres, so Chris can come straight back up and receive his award for being a brilliant franchise um, system in Europe. Wow, thank you. Yeah, so you're getting this wonderful chopping board. To <laughs> thank you. I will share this with everybody who's uh, going through this fantastic industry and uh, trying to go out of his borders. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Then we always look at newcomers in the market, and so uh, we have an award for Best New Franchise Concept 2019, and that goes to a cool new pokey concept called Island Pokey, and I think there's someone here from Island Pokey, so we'd like to give an award um, for um, Best New Franchise Concept 2019. Chris, congratulations, well done. So we have another wonderful chopping board, there we go. <laughs> and finally, um, there are so many cool new brands coming up that it's just really tough, you know, to decide what's best. We also think um, that we should recognize the best new global franchise opportunity that we've seen coming up uh, in the last year or so. And uh, that award goes to the butcher. So thank you so much, guys, for hosting us last night. And uh, we'd like to recognize your contribution to franchising um, by uh, giving you a small award. Hope you drink. 
Yossi. <laughs> I guess you do, having seen the, the bar <laughs> yesterday. Thank you and well done for bringing the butcher to the world. Thank We're you all looking much, forward to those burgers rolling Thank out. Thank you. Thank you.